Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of our Let's Play slash tutorial of Totally Vanilla RimWorld. No mods, no expansions. We've got our nice little starter base going on here. Not a whole lot of construction there. We are claiming a fair amount of territory over here for what is, at least for now, going to be a pretty generous animal pen. Waiting for these walls to complete, then we're going to build a new fence and then pop open this pen. Otherwise, let's see how things are doing inside the house. Storage level is getting pretty full. We got a fair amount of wood stored up, um, which means we don't really need to chop down too many trees too aggressively. If we want to pull these down over here, we can get some more info. By the way, you can toggle whether this is set in this sort of collapsible tree list or if it's an all-in-one inventory over here in the top left corner. I'm a big fan of the collapsible tree list. Um, in fact, I often use the tree list and have everything open personally because you know I do wanna keep a good eye on things, but there's a lot of stuff I don't really need um, to see the total stuff. Like you really don't need to get the breakdown of textiles, generally speaking. You probably don't need a breakdown of what raw food you've got. And in any case, even if I did have everything expanded, I like these subcategories because it still groups things up in a nice and obvious way um, that uh, at least at a glance, I can quickly uh, know where I'm looking for for something. Whereas if I don't have it in the tree view, I find it all mashes together. Lots of these little buttons here are worth exploring. Definitely take your time and take a look at a few of those in your own game. You might find some overlays that you find super useful all the time. Even if you don't use the overlays, sometimes by clicking on these and then using them, you discover, oh, hold on, look at this. This is the beauty display. Look how ugly some of this train is. Oh, I didn't realize that was a problem. That sort of thing. And then day to day, you don't end up using the beauty display, but you sort of know when you see some blood on the ground, wow, things are not pretty over here. If you take a look at Vort, and see the situation, right now the beauty of the area is 0% in this room. Uh, Vort has minus 15, minus 15 to her mood as a result of this being an ugly environment. Luckily, right now, again, everyone's mood is pretty decent because we still have low expectations because it's a, uh, a new and very poor colony, so don't expect much. But it could certainly cause a problem, especially some of these other modifiers. Um, start to add up and the last thing you want especially early on in your colony you really don't want one of your persons to have a bit of a mental break even if it's not a bad one if it's just oh i'm gonna just do a sad wander for an afternoon well we only have four people losing someone for a period of time is going to be a significant drain how do we keep this area clean well i mean certainly we can make sure that someone's cleaning priority is a little higher that's going to definitely help. Uh, you can force someone to go to work. So Sky's coming through here. I can say, listen, could you uh, prioritize cleaning the area around here a little bit? Just grabbed her and right clicked on the ground somewhere. That only works for someone who with cleaning it enabled. So I can only do that with Fob and Sky. If I told Vort to try to clean up here, Vort would not do that because she will never do any cleaning. Um, some things like the blood is is being generated by the butcher table. So right away you're like, hmm, maybe I should move the butcher table somewhere else. This is gonna be especially important whenever we start cooking as opposed to having a nutrient paste dispenser because the uh, blood on the ground, not only is it unbeautiful, it's also unclean and can lead to food poisoning if you're cooking in the same area. But yeah, we're getting a constant supply of blood on the ground thanks to the butcher's table. So we probably want a separate area. The other thing that can help a lot is with flooring. Uh, this room here is also not pretty because it's got some blood in the ground. I don't know, blood of a rat. I, I'm thinking someone dragged it around. The way dirt kind of works in the game, I, I'm assuming it applies to, the, to blood. I don't usually think about it because I'm not usually spreading blood around because of various things. But the way dirt works in RimWorld is when any of the pawns, and that includes animals, includes, mm, some animals in some ways. I think certain animals have slightly different mechanics, but um, certainly for people at least, when they are on a tile that's got any dirt, and that includes something like this is this tile here, this is just soil. There's no actual dirt or trash or blood on this particular square, but because it's got soil, it's inherently dirty people can grab it and track it on their feet. And then as they enter new tiles, they can deposit the dirt on those tiles. And it gets worse and worse the dirtier things are, at least I believe. I, I can't tell you the math in the background um, entirely, but that's the sort of thing. Um, even if we were to floor this area, this bedroom here has a lot of dirt all over. And that's because every time someone comes in, they're walking around here, they get dirt on their shoes and then deposit in here. We can dramatically cut down how dirty things are inside our house by, um, minimizing how many areas people transfer dirt onto flooring. There are some great mods that add some um, 
uh, some like little welcome mats and things that I think are quite good for controlling some of that dirt stuff. Here we won't have that as an option, but if we did end up flooring everything in here, certainly things we keep a lot cleaner. It would add more beauty to the area as well as just keeping the dirt a little bit under control. So that's certainly something we're going to want to do. However, I don't want to do it quite yet because I'm looking for, oh, are these done? Almost. We've got one little missing square over there. Otherwise, it looks like things are, are enclosed, which is very handy. And there we go, Fob, Fob the Builder just finished that area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this wooden fence to select it, and I'm going to allow this. So now Fob is gonna start working on this fence. And then once that's done, I'm gonna deconstruct this back part over here and we're gonna have a nice big pen for our coos. We got a cow and a bull. And already they, they're, you know, they're eating, they're still eating more food than exists in here. They're not out of food yet, there's still some grass, but there's no way for enough grass to grow here to keep up with the eating. So we definitely need a bigger pen. We are low on food. Um, which I suppose is true. We have 300 like various pieces of food, but it takes multiple chunks of this stuff per meal, even the nutrient paste meal. So we don't have 376 meals. We have far fewer than that. Um, I don't remember, does it take, it takes a certain amount of nutrition to make a nutrient paste meal? I guess it doesn't say it here. The wiki will describe that. When you go and uh, cook meals, you do get a breakdown of how much nutrition is used to make. I don't think you use very many units of nutrition to make a nutrient paste meal compared to a regular meal. I might be wrong about it. You might use the exact same amount, but it's definitely gonna use multiple units of food over here. Um, the low food warning happens when we have fewer than, X oh, there you go. We have 14 full bars of food in storage currently. And we have four people that are gonna eat it. We have about three days worth of food. That's not a lot. Now we do have crop over here. The um, the potato plant here, what are we at? 68% grown, so it's getting there. Of course we could pick more berries, but we'll probably have to look at some more food sources soon. That may include some hunting. It's actually been a couple of days since I recorded the last bits of this, actually maybe three or four days, I don't remember. I haven't posted any of these online yet um, because I want to make sure I had a good amount of these done, but I don't remember if we've done any hunting in this game yet. Let's take a look at that just in case. Let's get this wildlife tab over here. This will show us all the animals in the area we're in, as well as animals that might revenge themselves, avenge themselves, I suppose, if they're attacked, or avenge themselves if they, uh, if a taming uh, attempt fails. So there's two ways we could keep a steady supply of, of meat available in here. One of the things we could do is we could tame more animals and have more breeding animals in here. That's one thing to consider. And the other thing we could do is just hunt certain things. Um, we could tame boars. I don't usually do that. I usually tame, I mean, I wanna tame things that feel like livestock, although I guess boars are kind of like pigs, sure. Um, the there is on the RimWorld wiki page a breakdown of which animals are most efficient to raise as livestock and that is a result of how much grazing they have to do versus how much meat they give um, some animals graze a lot but don't really give that much meat and some are the other way around the don't, don't I'm, I'm just mentioning it to acknowledge that RimWorld is an interesting and complex game but don't worry about those specifics who cares about that just 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 go and um and tame whatever you think is the most interesting and most fun. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hunt some boars because boars are delicious. We're gonna go and get ourselves some pig meat. So I'm just gonna flag a few boars to be hunted. And actually, I guess I did do this because if I recall correctly, did I have more than one person assigned for hunting for a while and they almost shot each other? Yeah, they did. Yeah, so Honey should go out and hunt some boars relatively soon. What else would Honey be doing? She'd also be looking after growing right now. That's fine. The crops are all settled, so that's gonna be okay. She's gonna do a little crafting right now. So she's gonna finish this block, and then when she evaluates her new job, she should go hunting. If not, I will quickly recruit and unrecruit her and see what uh, she does. Okay, she's eating a nutrient paste meal. She's gonna cut more blocks. Okay, so I'm gonna recruit and unrecruit her. What? Oh, wrong person. My eyes, I think I was looking at animal handling. Sorry, Sky is the hunter. There we go, and she's going out and hunting wild boars with her survival rifle, or bolt action rifle rather. Um, and there we go. So that'll help her food situation a little bit. But yeah, if we can keep, um, if we can raise some more cows. Is our, is our, is our cow pregnant? That's under health, isn't it? Yes, okay, good. If we can keep getting more cattle, and no inbreeding of animals is not represented in this game, so you don't have to worry about that. You just, you know, your animals just keep reproducing, that's fine. As long as you have a breeding pair to start off with, you're gonna be all right. Really, we only need one bull. We wouldn't mind maybe a second one as a backup, just in case something happens, but there we have it. Okay, this is coming up as well. These fences really don't take a lot of work to do. I mean, one piece of wood, one unit of work for each one. They get built really fast. 
They get built as quickly as uh, power conduits. Actually, I hadn't realized that. Because power conduits are one metal and one unit of work. We just finished our machining tech, so we can build a machining table to craft guns, grenades, flak armor, and also shred dead mechanoids. We can talk about that later. What would I like to get next? I might want to get Devil Strand. Well, though we don't have a great grower yet. Devil Strand is a plant that you can grow that gives you really amazing um, fibers for clothing. Um, much, much, much stronger than cotton. Uh, I think it's got a better temperature range. Devil Strand is really great to make a lot of clothing with, especially the outermost layer of clothing. So like maybe a duster or a parka if you're in a cold area, um, that can be really useful to make out of Devil Strand. But you do need a fairly good plant skill to be able to do it. And we don't really have someone in our group to do that. So often I would prioritize that fairly highly. I don't think that's a good fit for us. Drug production wouldn't be the worst idea because we can use this to make medicine and also to make panoxiclin. Panoxiclin is a is a medicine that your pawns take to prevent diseases. They they take uh, if they can take a dose once every five days. It lasts for five days. So if they take panoxiclin once every five days, they will be um, unaffected by a large number of different diseases. Um, I think flu, plague, malaria. A few other things that can get. How often your pawns get diseases depends, well, first of all, on what difficulty you're playing, but also where you have settled. Um, jungles, I believe, have a much, much, much higher disease uh, prevalence than other places. I think places like deserts are very low on diseases, uh, but of course, deserts have their own problems. So depending on where you are, <laughs> you may prioritize panoxiclin more than other things. Um, I love auto doors, although they will consume a lot of uh, components. I might go for like, I guess machining le leads to other things. Right now, which is grenades, amount Molotov cocktails, um, I guess, but yeah, it does lead to more things. We may want to be able to craft our own guns. We may want to be able to quickly get up to armor. I don't know what my plans were. I think I did discuss that oftentimes I like to go to microelectronics fairly quickly because it gives us a much better research bench that does research quite a lot faster. Maybe I'll go ahead and just do that. It is a long research project, but I do like to get it early because it accelerates absolutely everything else. Microelectronics also unlocks a communications console that allows us to trade with ships in orbit. So we'll get quite a lot more trade opportunities communities, which is incredibly useful for us. So Fob the Builder, I was having to cut down that tree that was in the way, but otherwise is almost done the fencing. Are you just getting a meal right now? Oh, you're relaxing socially. How nice. Did we do any work on the schedule? Okay, a little bit. So I did go and tune the sleep schedule for these people because if for some reason they're not that sleepy, they don't really need to sleep in the morning. Mostly at 10 o'clock at night, they're going to go to sleep and then they'll sleep until they're fully rested and that's going to be okay. And then Honey is a night owl. She's on an opposite schedule. One of the things I quite like to do is I do like to put in an explicit recreation time. So currently, during the anything schedule, if someone's recreation need falls below 30%, they will go, I believe it's 30%, they will go and try to do something to entertain themselves. One of the advantages to scheduling in recreation time is, and we can do it this way, is that um, if the people are doing recreation at the same time, they'll spend more time together and they will develop relationships. We can check the social relationship people have. Wow, Fob and Sky have a fantastic relationship at plus 100. Now, if someone's abrasive or say a misogynist, that might backfire. You might keep that, you want to keep that person oh, woo, away from social situations. Uh, but in this case, this is going to be pretty nice. If you do have people who are romantically compatible, then they can also develop a relationship, in which case they may ask you to build them a bedroom with a double bed so that they can share uh, their sleep time together, which will make them very happy. The downside to having people develop strong relationships, whether it's friendship or becoming lovers or getting married, is that when one of them dies, the other one will be extremely unhappy. But in the meanwhile, um, you know, uh, a couple that gets to sleep together will be that much happier. And they'll also save space because they can share a bedroom, which is great, you know? Fewer rooms required, and you could invest more in that one bedroom, make it very pretty. We are going to be raided here, though. A group of tribespeople from the Red, Tire to Red Tiger Toxo have arrived nearby. They will prepare for a while, then attack. It's important to read that because sometimes they're going to attack right away. Sometimes they do prepare for a while. So here we've got a moment before they're going to do anything. They're going to spend, it says a group. It's actually just one person over here. We've got Kai, the treehouse builder, has shown up. They've got a bow, although they're not very good at shooting. Teetotaler nudist. This person here actually would be a great addition. If we can somehow capture Kai alive, their huge plant skill would be wonderful. They've got passion for it. We don't have an expert planter yet. They're also great at crafting and have passion for it, which is gonna be lovely as well. Nudist is interesting. Um, Kai is not happy 
if they have to wear clothes. So right now, actually, they did show up with clothes. They've got some um, a tribal cloth tribal wear. So they're actually unhappy right now because they're wearing clothing. Nudists are extremely happy when they're naked. And this means nudists are actually pretty easy to keep happy if you just keep them nude. They're gonna be thrilled with their life. The downside is if you're in a place that has a very cold area or if you want someone to fight and they have to put on armor, they're not gonna be happy having to wear armor or having to keep a parka on to stop their <clears throat> bits and pieces from freezing off. You know, you wanna take care of your people even if it means that they're gonna be unhappy about it. Anyway, I don't think we'll have a hard time defeating Kai. Kai's not wearing armor, is only using a bow, and they're not very good at it. But I think it would be very handy if we could capture them alive because they have great skill. And, and nudist is awkward, but not actually a problem. <laughs> uh, this, I believe, are we are, okay, I guess we're not in a permanent summer area because it would say permanent summer here. Um, so it is going to get a little colder in the winter, but maybe we'll just keep Kai indoors for now, for then, or we'll temporarily force them to put on some clothes so they don't lose their bits and pieces. Is Kai male or female? I, I interpret Kai as a male name. They are a male name. All right. So um, at some point, Kai will try to attack because we've got everything walled off here. Oh, hang on. Speaking of walls and such, I'm going to go deconstruct right over here. We'll let our coos go out into the larger field over here. And yeah, that and then also while we'll have this larger field, we can consider um, uh, taming more animals to add to our herd. In fact, I might want to flag some of that right now while I'm thinking about it. Um, I think that the deers are, aren't actually not bad. So there's ducks and bows, bucks and ducks and bows. Bucks and does wouldn't be a bad thing to tame, like one doe and one buck to get that started. I believe ibexes are considered to be very, very, very optimal. We don't have any here. We might get a herd of that later on. That wouldn't be bad. Um, turkeys and things, well, not the male turkeys, but turkeys can lay eggs, or am I thinking of my mods? Sometimes I get confused in my game about, hang on, let me check. If I check my stockpile and I check raw food and animal products, okay, Unfertilized and fertilized eggs. Okay, eggs are in normal rim world. So yeah, I might say a few things that are actually based on mods, but at least there I was right. Uh, right now, I'm not going to be worried about too much. Mostly, we'll just we'll have our cows and that'll be okay, but we could consider ibexes. Um, I like muffaloes because you can shear them for wool. The cows are great because we can milk them for milk. Milk them for milk, sure. Um, and there are a few other animals in between. Uh, some of the animals uh, can be used as pack animals for caravans. Uh, that muffaloes would include that. So they can you can carry a lot more things on your caravans across the world whenever you go and venture out into the world. Uh, and some animals are rideable as well. And that will mean that your caravans not only can probably ha carry more goods, but your people will be able to ride them and therefore, um, um, and therefore travel faster. So everything is blocked off here. So what I think will happen when Kai decides to start their assault, they'll walk up to one of our walls and start to hit it. Um, we could potentially prepare for that ahead of time. Um, we could actually put a defense outdoors, and I might want to do something like that. I'm going to build a new barricade kind of up in this area here. I guess it doesn't need to be quite this big. We don't have that many people. We'll, we'll put a little construction job in there and see that happens. Okay, they're beginning their attack, so it doesn't matter. Now, I'm trying to remember, are all of our people able to fight? No. Honey is non-violent, so we'll leave Honey behind. And Vort is only using a knife. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and drag on Vort. This is something even a lot of veteran Rimworld players don't know. I didn't know about it for a very long time. You can right click and drag people to reorganize them. What I like to do is keep my pacifists over on the far right side. Because that way when I select them, I can easily just not select the pacifists. And I often like to put the, um, the, the range people on the far left and then the melee people to the right of them. And it just makes it easy for me to keep things in my head. Now. We are going to have someone who's going to be trying to fire a bow at us. So let's do some cover. Fortunately, we won't have the barricades done in time. But I'm going to put Fob and Sky behind this rock, these rocks over here, because they can use that for cover. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck Vort in over here. So hopefully they'll be out of line of sight, but maybe we can jump out and stab people with Vort. So we're just going to let some time fly by. Oh, Kai's going over there. I think they might reorganize themselves in a second. If they, if they got close enough to us, they would reevaluate their attack routine. Are you going to go and smash this wall over here? I mean, I can't blame you. That's kind of legit. So you can click and drag and position people. It's quite handy. That that would didn't used to be in Brim World. You used to need a mod for that. So Kai just set that on fire. Oh, and then they're like, oh, hold on. There's someone for me to attack. So we're going to reevaluate. Now, Sky's got the long range weapon. And Fob's the short range. Um... This doesn't really matter. I'll put you here. I'll put Fob here. And I'll still do the same thing where I take Vort and kind of tuck you off into an edge here. Or, you know what? Go over here. 
That way, if Kai comes through here to try to shoot, Kai will try to get some cover. I don't know what range they have on their bow. There, you can see it there. So they're going to try to get behind one of these trees. I don't think Fob's going to have an angle of attack there. We're going to have to scoot you forward. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Vort... Oh, never mind. Come in from the side. Well, I guess we're not going to take this person alive, unfortunately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, allow all these. So that way we can take this jade that they were carrying. And we can take this bow, which we might just end up selling. I don't know. Is Vort a brawler or did we just not have a melee weapon? No, okay. So Vort... I can actually tell you, equip the short bow. It's not a great weapon, but it might be better than stabbing things. Since you're not an expert at melee and you actually do have some passion for shooting, we may as well get you a ranged weapon. But eventually someone will go and haul this stuff into, into our storage place. Although it's actually full. So there's no room in here for our jade or for the knife. Uh, the dead body could eventually get hauled to our blah, our dumping stockpile, but also will get hauled to the grave. I'm going to have them take care of that right away. Vort, I'm going to get you to let's strip Kai down. You know, that way they'll, they'll lay to rest as they want to be in life. And then we also get this tribal wear. Now, this tribal wear is tainted because it was worn by a corpse. No one's going to be happy if they wear this. It's going to make them feel very unhappy. I think if they're a psychopath, they might not be bothered by that. Um, it also won't sell for much, but we may as well go and claim it. And then now, Vort, what I'm going to do is ask you, please don't consume. Oh, you don't haul. Sky? Yeah, prioritize burying them, please, and thank you. And yeah, we don't have anywhere to store some of these things. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll lay Kai to rest. <laughs> Skyclad, I suppose, as they say. Oh, right, I forgot. Stuff's on fire, yo. There we go. Put out that little fire that Kai started. Someone will come and repair this wall at some point because it took a little bit of damage. But that's not a really, that's not a high priority thing. We don't have to worry about that. And anyway, we still need to get the, let the cows out, but that'll happen soon as well. Um, the priority system for construction, people do construct before they deconstruct. So Fob won't go and deconstruct that area while there's something to build. So we'll do that. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to toggle this door. I'm going to say to hold it open. What we're going to do here is we're going to intentionally leave a hole in our base. And what's going to happen, the next time someone attacks us, they're going to see that gap and they're going to come in this direction. And we'll have a little bit of a barricade set up here so that we can do our fighting in this area. We'll talk maybe about some more advanced defenses later on. Um, we might talk about kill boxes. There's also some specific defensive structure you can do. We can improve this defense quite a bit. We'll, we can talk about why this works later on. But if you alternate walls and barricades, what you can do is you can put your people behind a wall and they will sort of, they will lean over and fire around the wall at enemies, but enemies will have a far reduced chance to hit you with this kind of structure. Um, I guess for now, it's enough to say, hey, here's a cool thing you can do. If nothing else, it actually does look kind of neat, so why not? And uh, yeah, so if we if we have three people, it's perfect. We put one behind each wall. If we have more people than that, well, some of them just stand behind the barricades. Some are behind the walls. It's still better than anything else. Although with this tree here, no one's going to be able to stand right in that spot. So what we'll probably want to do actually is put a little bit of flooring here to prevent the trees from growing the area. Um, I think I'll put some more barricades over there. The other thing we might want to consider doing is removing the rocks as well as the trees over here to prevent our enemies from being able to take cover if they decide to attack us. Of course, they can always use this ill area over here. There are some ways we can deal with that though, and we may want to look into something like that, uh, but more on that maybe later. But basically, they can't stand an area and use cover if there's um, if there's like a rock there, for example. So what we can do, our little, like the dumping stockpile, if we had a dumping stockpile for stone that was set up um, it's a little tricky to pull off exactly what I'm talking about because they can still use the stone for cover, although the walls are better. If we stored stuff over here, they wouldn't be able to tuck into those, assuming there's rocks here at some point, but they could stand behind here in these rocks. On the other hand, that's pretty far away. If I just keep extending it out here, eventually we get to the point where it's too far away for anyone to take cover, but let's not worry about that right now. So Fob's going to go and finish that. I'm going to ask someone to chop down this tree. Whoever our best, uh, whoever's assigned to plant cutting will chop down that tree for us, and that's going to be okay. And Fob, actually, I know you're going for a walk, and I feel bad interrupting this, but I'm going to get you to just, all you need to do is remove one piece of fence here, and that's going to be enough. Now, if we click on this pen marker, we can see the pen is this entire area. Also, we grow 23 nutrition per day and only eat three per day. So we have more than enough grass over here to keep these cows happy forever. Although I suppose these alpacas might munch on some of that, but uh, we'll deal with that next. 
All right, food there. We clearly need more storage since this is completely full. This was a great little starter base, but we are gonna re we are reaching the point where we need more. So I'm actually gonna ask for these barricades to be deconstructed, and we're gonna start some new buildings here in just a moment. What I might do is just keep going with this sort of 13 by 13 block that we've got going on, because it's quite handy. And I think I might make one large stockpile. There's reasons why that's advantageous. But for now, let's let Bob, there you go. Construction is very low on the queue. You construct first, then deconstruct, and then you repair. If people drop something, it will leave a door stuck open. So someone dropped the blocks here because they had nowhere else to put it, and it will jam this door open. So do keep aware that that's something that can happen. Um, and it's particularly bad if you've got a freezer, because what can happen then is the freezer door gets stuck open and your freezer doesn't really freeze anymore. Hauling some steel. So people have gotten down to their haul task over here. And you know what? We might just want to let them do that for a little while before I assign them new tasks. Might just want to give them a chance to go and finish some of these hauling jobs. We'll get a bunch of steel inside of our base, which is going to be more convenient for the next construction stuff. Plus, if there's something that happens and for some reason we have to seal ourselves up inside of our base, our resources will be there. As long as no one is idle, and no one is, you'll see a little clock there, you'll get a warning on the right hand side. As long as no one is idle, you know what? They're doing useful stuff, so why not? We can also get them some bedrooms finally because they don't like these barracks. The barracks have two things. First of all, um, a barrack doesn't make pe it has innately makes people a little bit disappointed, especially if it's an awful one like this one is because it's small and it's dirty. But also the barrack by itself because it's, if people want their privacy, right? They prefer their own bedrooms. Not only do they get that, but a lot of times you will see uh, this disturbed sleep, and that's the problem. They're trying to sleep, then someone comes in and out of the barracks, and they wake each other up, and so you end up getting more and more mood debuffs from a shared housing. So getting some proper bedrooms up would be something that would be very useful to do relatively soon. What I'm actually thinking is building a series of bedrooms around this area here and converting this stockpile to maybe a um, like a, a dining room that'll be kept clean and separate from the workshop over here. That might not be a bad thing. People will get up. They can go through the little dining room. I mean, the nutrient paste dispenser is over here, but I'm sure we're going to restructure things at some point. At some point, I'm hoping we can get a cook. That's going to make a big difference. And then, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll just expand and set up a big storage room over here. It'll be near the workshop so they don't have to walk too far. I think that's decent. Um, you really do want to try to minimize how far people have to walk for things. And I think that's not going to be a bad idea. Also, one of the things with keeping the storage room sort of its own isolated area, because some things like, let's say we're, we're doing something. Let's say we set up a, um, a tailoring workshop somewhere and you might think oh well why don't we keep the leather and stuff right next to it and it's not a terrible idea but a lot of the things that you have are naturally not pretty if you take a look at this pigskin over here for example beauty is minus four so it's quite convenient if it's close to the tailor's shop but you may not want it to be in the actual room where people are working or living because it's inherently unpretty so usually an enclosed um, stockpile is good there is one interesting exception to that though under furniture there's a shelf. So a shelf works exactly the same as a storage stockpile. You build it and it's two squares. So it's gonna be two squares, right? One and two. And they, they work exactly the same as two squares in a stockpile on the ground. The difference is that the shelf prevents um, the, the beauty or rather ugliness of the object from affecting the room. So you can put a little shelf as a storage right next to your work sites in a way that won't cause problems. A shelf can also be placed outside and it will prevent uh, things from deteriorating. Things on a shelf count as if they're inside of a room under a roof so that they don't deteriorate. So there's that's kind of neat. Downside is shelves use up material. So, you know, you're gonna have to spend some, some of your extra wood or even steel or something like that to make a shelf. But, oh, but it can be worth it. We got a transport um, pod crash. Paolo has just dropped here. Okay, he's got a few wounds. Most of it can be fixed up. Um, he does have an old gunshot wound, which is, ooh, that's really bad. His torso is at seven of 40. Although that includes the bruise. Still though, this is, that's a, that gunshot, that old gunshot's pretty bad. The reduce to his t reduction to his torso will probably affect his moving and manipulation kind of in general. So that's not ideal, but it's not a deal breaker if he's got some good skills. And he does. He's got double passion for cooking, crafting. He's an expert artist as well. Art, you can make art, which makes, which is beautiful. 
and makes you know people happy from being around beautiful stuff. It's also a good way to make some serious money. He's also super smart. He's got the industrious trait, which is one of the best traits in the game. Global work speed plus 35%. No matter what he does, he works 35% faster, whether that's crafting or research or something like that. He's nimble, which makes him much better at dodging in melee combat. Uh, he's a body purist. Now, this is a little awkward because if for some reason Paolo lost a body part and we wanted to put a prosthetic body part on him, Paolo would be very unhappy about that. But for now... He's totally okay because there's nothing going on. So body purist is a negative trait, but mm, I'm definitely perfectly fine right now. We would very much like Paolo to join us here. So what we're going to have to do is capture Paolo. So and the reason for that, like we could just rescue him. And then if he's happy with us, right, we could rescue him and we'll put him in a medical bed. We'll treat him and eventually get better. And I guess there's a chance he joins us. I don't know the mechanics for it, especially in vanilla. I'm not sure. But instead, we're going to capture him. We're going to make him our prisoner. Now, instead of prisoner in this colony, since everyone seems pretty nice, that maybe we should think of him more as a mandatory guest. And we will convince him that joining us and sticking around is the best thing for him to do. What we need for that is we need a prisoner bed. Now, if I convert any of the beds in this room to a prisoner bed, the entire room because it becomes a prisoner room and all the beds will be flagged for prisoner stuff. What we're going to do right now, even though it's not very good long term, we're going to, have to, want to, we're going to want to make a change at this pretty quickly. I'm going to put a sleeping spot on the ground because it doesn't have to be constructed. And I will make this flagged as for prisoners. So now this is a prisoner room, which is totally fine. Our own our own colonists can hang out in a prisoner room. That's going to be OK. And then we're going to ask, let's say, Vort over here to capture Paolo. Now, if Paolo was from a faction, it would actually tell us here that you know, capturing this person would make someone upset. But Paolo is just from space, just a space refugee. He's not part of any faction. So no one's going to become upset with us capturing Paolo. So we're going to go ahead and do that and bring him into the base. There we go. So Paolo is now our prisoner. We've got a prisoner button over here and we have to choose what we want to do with him. By default, there's no interaction. We will keep him fed. We will keep him healthy. But that's the extent of whatever we will do. We are going to want to recruit him. So what's going to happen with recruiting? The prisoner has a certain amount of resistance um, and we're going to have chats with Paolo as long as Paolo is conscious and we will reduce his resistance to zero. And then once he goes down to zero, uh, eventually, well, very quickly after that, we'll have a chat with him and we will recruit him to our group. Some people are easier to, to recruit. Some people are harder. We could just release him or execute him. We could reduce the resistance down to zero, but not actually recruit him. I'm not sure what the purpose of that is um, in general, maybe. I don't know. I don't even want to guess, but we're going to try to recruit Paolo because it'll be quite useful. We can set what kind of medicine the prisoner is allowed to get. Right now, he's set to only herbal medicine. Um, the idea is by default, maybe you don't want to use your best medicine on your prisoners. If Paolo was very badly hurt, well, that does have to be tended pretty quickly. You know what? We're going to give Paolo proper medical care. I will say, uh, where am I looking for? Prisoner. Paolo, we can give him proper medicine. And then someone's going to go doctoring. You see Vort is going to be doctoring. They're going for the herbal med. I'm just going to recruit and unrecruit Vort. And that should cause the, um, Vort to reset what medicine they're going to use. There we go. So now Vort's going to grab proper medicine. Four units of it. We're using a lot of medicine on Paolo. But I want to make sure that he survives as quickly as possible. We want to reduce the chance of infection, especially since he's currently sitting on the ground. Medical work, just like cooking, is really affected by cleanliness. So this is a dirty, dirty room that we're um, uh, treating him in. We're really hoping he doesn't get an infection. Fingers crossed there. And that's one of the other reasons I want to use proper medicine, though. Uh, if someone does get an infection, you can treat the infection and hopefully they'll become immune before the infection kills them. Um, depending on where it is as well, you can uh, sometimes use a um, you can amputate the affected limb before the infection kills a person. However, he was actually cut on his neck. Turns out amputating someone's neck doesn't really work as a cure against death. You know, I know it's weird, but uh, yeah. Anyway, let's definitely start constructing some new room stuff. So I'm going to construct a new big building to maybe use as a large stockpile. So I'm going to go with a 13 by 13 layout. Same as the sort of core thing over here, which again is the biggest size you can do without needing additional roof supports. Well, that's not true. I suppose 13 wide is the biggest you could do. We could make this longer, but you know, 13 by 13 by 13 seems fine. We'll put doors all over the place because it's going to be very convenient to be able to access the stockpile that way. And I'm actually going to go and I'm going to uh, make a new stockpile. 
over here right now. Even though it's not currently enclosed and roofed, we're gonna make a stockpile anyway. And what I'm gonna do is on our old stockpile, I'm gonna hit the button to copy these settings and I'll paste them over here. So this stockpile will act exactly the same as this stockpile over here. Uh, when someone picks up something and wants to haul it to a stockpile, they will pick the nearest, they will check like based on priority, but assuming all priorities are the same, they will just deliver things to the nearest stockpile, generally speaking. Um, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to actually, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to delete this stockpile because I want to want everything at, from here moved out of it. We'll move it to the big stockpile. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a prisoner room for Paolo short term so that they're going to have a slightly better space uh, to, to live in. I'll plan a light bulb. And what we'll do as well is we will build a bed in this room. Notice it tells me I don't have enough wood stored because none of this wood is in a stockpile currently. But obviously we can totally build this. It's not going to be a problem. So we're going to get the stockpile set up. And yeah, that'll that'll help things a lot. In the end, we're going to need... We're, we need a lot of storage room in RimWorld. There are plenty of mods that add extra storage space, makes your stacks bigger, or has different storage options. Uh, but without any of those, you do use a lot of space for storage and stockpile. Uh, or, a lot of place for storage in RimWorld. Um, there are certain things you can do. There are, there are certain things that are not worth keeping around and you can, uh, you know, continuously sell things. Um, there are, if we built a smelter, we'd have the option of burning some of the like bad clothing, bad weapons just to clear up some space. And sometimes you just end up doing that. Okay. Fob's going to have to chop down the tree. That's fine. What I'm going to do actually, just to make sure we got a proper tree cutter doing this, I'm going to put a chop wood command. Okay, just doing that. And this one's not mature enough to be proper wood, but I'm going to ask for that plant to be cut anyway, just so that we get one of our proper plant workers to go and ch cut those down as quickly as possible. We had a minor break risk. Fob's not feeling fantastic. They're ravenously hungry. Well, there you go. I was going to say, at some point, you're going to finish that wall. <gasps> oh! oh, I didn't realize that. This nutrient paste dispenser, because it's technically being accessed by a prisoner over here, this counts as a nutrient paste dispenser only for prisoners. So none of my colonists can use this. Fob's about to go and eat raw pork. That might make them sick. So I'm going to make a new sleeping spot over here, set as a prisoner. I'm going to go and um, deconstruct the old sleeping spot. So this is no longer a prisoner room. I'm going to interrupt anyone. I'm just going to recruit. I'm going to draft and undraft everyone. So anyone who was about to go eat raw meal, raw food, they're going to reevaluate what they're going to do. So now they're going to go and get the nutrient paste dispenser. And someone will eventually move Paolo. Paolo yeah, Paolo. Uh, I will just recapture him over here right away just to make sure it happens properly. There we go. Paolo has been recaptured, moved into this room, and we no longer do this. It's also a problem if you put... Um, let's say I put the... Um, the sleeping spot here and I had some meals in this stockpile. Well, all those meals would count as meals only for prisoners and your own people wouldn't be able to eat them. I, that, in the early game, when I don't have a dedicated prisoner room, I sometimes get trapped like that. I forgot that it would affect the nutrient paste dispenser, but I'm really happy it happened in the video here because if you run into a single similar problem, you now know how to deal with it. Oh, this light does not have power. I'm just going to run a power conduit. Uh, well, that's, that's technically using more material than I need. I could just run a power conduit down to about here and the light will reach. That uses a little bit less material, a little bit less time. I mean, we'll probably end up running more power conduits all over the place later, but for now, that's going to be an okay start. Anyway, I'm going to go and put a cut in here. Folks, thanks for watching another episode of our vanilla Let's Play slash tutorial for RimWorld. Hope you're enjoying it and finding it useful, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.